You are watching a China in Portugal.com video tutorial FCL and LCL shipping. In this video, you will learn the definition of LCL and FCL freight and when LCL and FCL freight is the right choice for your business. And last but not least, a QA session where I will answer some of the most common related questions. Now, let's get to it. Okay, so. LCL and FCL. Now, the definition of LCL is less than container load or a shared container. And FCL is full container load or a single consignee shipment. Now, the difference is that a shared container includes cargo from at least two or more. It could be as many as four, five, or even six different consignees in the same shipment, in the same container. So this is for buyers importing fairly small volumes while a single consignee shipment is, well, one buyer that is booking one full container for themselves. Okay? Now, when is LCL and FCL making sense? Now, it's, it's not as obvious as it may seem. I want to underline here that the volume inside a 20 feet container is roughly 40 cubic meters. Okay? So, uh, no, sorry, actually 30 cubic meters, 29 cubic meters. Got a, bit, got a bit wrong there. Now, LCL is more cost effective if the cargo volume is below 12 to 14 cubic meters. Roughly, if your cargo volume fills up 50%, roughly yeah, half of a 20 feet container, then LCL is the right choice. Then it will be more cost effective. But if you can book at least half a container, then the price will be the same if you just go and book it yourself and yeah it may, may sound a bit strange but the reason for this is that the shipping companies they have a fixed administrative cost like uh, a, a fixed yeah a fixed shipping cost on a per ship shipment basis it means that the amount of documents to fill in the customs clearance procedures are all the same regardless of whether they are shipping say two cubic meters or 200 this means that the shipping cost per unit is much higher when shipping LCL as compared to FCL, which explains why FCL can actually make sense if you're not even close to filling a 20-foot container uh, by yourself. Now, FCL is the right choice, as said, if it is above 12 cubic meters and above roughly 200 kilos. Because the reason I want to go into the weight here now, ship, sea freight shipping costs are in most cases exclusively based on volume. Weight is not something that you even have to consider when shipping by sea. But of course, if, the, if your cargo is say below 200 kilograms and uh, one cubic meter, then air freight might be a better option. Now, Q&A a few common questions about uh, FCL and LCL shipping. So, can I consolidate multiple LCL shipments into, F into one FCL shipment? And yes, you can, and this is one of the best ways to actually save on your freight costs. Some importers have been buying for, for years from, from China and other countries in Asia. They have been working up uh, supply relationships with suppliers all over the country, uh, in, such, in many cases in different countries. And when you ship separate LCL shipments, then you do pay very, very high shipping costs on a per unit basis. Now, you could save thousands of dollars if you consolidate all of these LCL shipments into one FCL shipment. Now practically what you need to do is to book this according to FOB terms so that all suppliers provide you with the export clearance documents. Now all of this can be consolidated into one shipment. It's only a matter of having the export clearance documentation for all shipments and to coordinate the suppliers so that they ship the cargo to one and the same forwarder, one uh, one pickup location, and that should be one and the same uh, port of loading, say Shanghai, Shenzhen, or Hong Kong. Okay? Now, of course, this can be a lot harder to put off in reality given that you have multiple suppliers working with different production schedules, and a delay at one supplier will halt all your ship shipments. So there are drawbacks to this strategy. But if you can do this, and especially if you work with suppliers in the same region, then you can really save a lot of money this way. 
why is LCL shipping so much more expensive as compared to FCL shipping? And as I explained, the reason for this is because you have fixed fees that apply on a per shipment basis. It doesn't matter if you are shipping two cubic meters or 20 or even 40 cubic meters. The amount of paperwork and the time spent by fairly expensive logistics professionals is the same. And time is money. So this translates into higher costs. And it's not only that, but they also take costs into consideration uh, in, in, in transit, loading and unloading and, and, and so on. And well, perhaps because they can. That's one more reason. I do know that some forwarders actually have a lot better profit margins than LCL as compared to FCL shipping. Can all suppliers and freight forwarders offer LCL shipping? Well, most can. It's the question is if they want to. So before you approach a forwarder, you should give them some sort of overview of your estimated volumes and frequency of shipments. You don't want to sign on with a forwarder that is not capable or interested in handling your LCL cargo. Now, every, every forwarder can basically ship FCL. That's sort of something you can take for granted. Okay, if you want to learn more about importing products from Asia, go to chinaimportshop.com slash ebook and get your free ebook right now. In the ebook, you will learn how to import and launch almost any product using a tested four-step procedure, and how to identify qualified suppliers on Alibaba and global sources, and how to buy private labeling products while protecting your IP. And last, the best practices for managing shipping and customs procedures, including LCL and FCL shipping in the United States, the European Union, and other markets. So go to this URL, chinaimportal.com slash ebook, and get your free copy today.